Welcome. In this session, we will continue with the CompuPlast Virtual Extrusion Laboratory 2DFEM module and create a project for the geometry that we created in the, in the prior session. Before we can create a project, we should provide a material that we will use in our project. So we'll go to the database and select, I'll select here a 1MI low density material, the copy, then go to our 2DFEM project folder into materials and then click paste. So now I have a material in the local folder and now I can proceed with creating a project. Click new, rename it, demo one, and click edit. The a project finds the last geometry that was created, which was our geometry, you can see it here, and it has already determined that it's an axisymmetric flow field and not a planar flow field. So we'll stay with axisymmetric. We will not include inertia effects or gravity effects in this calculation. We'll go to the material and we will click on the material line, which will bring up this button, which will show us in our local material database, the 1MI material that we copied from the main database. Click select. And um, the iterations we will leave as non Newtonian temperature iterations uh, in this simulation, and we click save and solve. The simulation will proceed, and the results will open up. We just click in the background here, and we see the velocity distribution within the flow field. Now, to get a better idea of, of the geometry that we've simulated, we can revolve the geometry here, click Revolve, and it creates um, this flow field here, and sometimes it's more um, helpful if we just do partial revolve. So here's 270 degree revolve, and we can see our flow field, which can represent, let's say, the die lips in a blown film die that are expanding from a, a 10 inch diameter to a 14 inch diameter. Or, or it can be the same geometry for a pipe die or downward. If we go downwards, we can be simulating a blow molding die that has an increased um, die exit uh, diameter. Um, whatever, whatever you uh, you wish that can be simulated as an axisymmetric flow field. Now that we understand what our geometry that we're simulating looks like, we can turn off the revolve, go back to our main geometry, and now do post processing of other variables. Um, so for example, we're looking at velocity here, we might want to know what the pressure drop is through this geometry. So we click pressure, and we can see the pressure contours, and the maximum pressure here is shown as 448 PSI. I can bring this window right into the um, display window here. And if we want to take a look at what's happening on a particular boundary, we can go over here to the boundary icon, and select, let's say, um, this boundary here, and it'll show us the pressure. Now you'll see um, the way the boundary was generated, it's actually showing it in the reverse order. I'm going to close this and um, go back, and close, go back, and I'll delete this, and I'll select another boundary on this side, and you see this one is appears to be going in the right in the right direction. And this has to do with the normal of the surface. So here we can see the pressure drop, uh, a much larger pressure drop toward the edge and where the gap is smaller. We'll close this. Or we, can, we can just go back to the main menu. We can leave the, uh, the grid open. Uh, if we want to do a cut somewhere in the geometry, we can just click on the main geometry and then click on the cut icon right here. And now we can go in and click on one side and drag the line across and click on the other side and now it creates a cut. But we were showing pressure on the, on the flow field so the pressure of course is constant across this gap. So we can simply switch over to velocity and now we get a velocity um, uh, profile through the gap and we can look at that and, and if we click inside the gap and move our mouse back and forth, you'll notice that it shows you the corresponding position in the flow field. Now, in addition to the velocity, we can pick any of these other variables that are shown here, and we can also compare variables. So perhaps on the velocity, we might want to compare another variable. Um, let's take the uh, shear stress 
and we'll take the stress magnitude. And so here, this blue line corresponds to the blue scale on the right, and this uh, black line, which is the velocity, corresponds to the black scale on the left. So if we look at the shear stress, the maximum stress is of course at the wall, and it has a value of about 4.2 psi there, and also it's symmetric, so it's about 4.2, 4.3 psi there, and the stress is zero, where the velocity is maximum. So you can see right in the middle there, it's essentially zero. Now we can leave that cut as it is, go back up to our main geometry, and perform another cut right at the die exit, right here. And now it remembers the last result that we were looking at, so now it's going to show us the velocity profile at the exit, which is moving a little bit faster, and our stress is a little bit higher. You can see here a value of about 8.2 on the right, and again due to symmetry, a value of about 8.2 on the left. Now another way to look at the velocity at the exit would be to simply select that boundary. So if I click on the boundary icon and select the actual exit here, and we get the same result essentially of the um, velocity and the shear stress um, right at the exit. Now the um, 2DFEM module also has the ability to do path lines. So if I click on this icon here, I can go into the flow field, and you can see that as I move along the flow field, it, it creates a, um, a path line and, the, and a gr corresponding graph for that path line. So I'll just click in here. I'll move the graph ar around. It remembers that we were looking at velocity and shear stress. So you can see here that the velocity is increasing as we go to the exit. And there's a bit of a stress jump right around that right around that corner at the exit. And we can look at any variable we want uh, along this along this path line. And with this um, box here, we can adjust the position of the path line or the streamline to different positions around the um, geometry. And in fact, if we want to see many path lines, we can turn off this real grid item, and then we can up here increase the number of path lines. And now if we zoom in, we can see that we have more path lines in the flow field. All right. So that's it for the post-processing of the 2D FEM module. In the next session, we will look at creating a geometry from a DXF file. Thank you.